Hey y'all, welcome back. Um, so today I am, as per usual, doing things under duress um, and I need to get a console uh, prepped. So today is uh, Wednesday, um, I think it's May 10th um, and I need to leave on tour. I have my first production rehearsal on Friday. So at the moment I have my sort of normal rack of stuff together, but uh, for this tour, um, I'm using a Midas M32R. Um, the band that I'm mixing uh, for this tour is the opening band in a theater tour. Uh, we're doing basically 2,500 to 15,000 cap rooms. Um, and the headliner would prefer that we use our own console. So I get to uh, put my little Midas M32 rig next to uh, an Avid S6L at front of house and at monitors. So I'm kind of laughing at that, that my little $3,000 console will be next to a hundred and some thousand dollar console. But anyway, um, I, I learned this about a month ago that they wanted me to uh, uh, bring my own console. Um, and I didn't have a control surface. I had the uh, M32C, but I didn't have the uh, the R. And I talked to a couple of friends of mine, and uh, they kind of were like, well, you could mix a 15,000 cap room on an iPad, but that'd be a little scary. So I thought, you know what? You're right. I should buy the control surface. So uh, at LM, which is where I work, um, our lead time is so bad right now because we're still so crushed from the onslaught of orders in 2022. Uh, I put this in as a month. Uh, rush and we just got it done and the only reason we got it done is because I built it myself so <laughs> that that came down to it yesterday where I'm like oh my god my case still isn't done I need to build this myself so I finally have it all finished up today so now I have to wire it so um, the rig for this for this tour basically is going to be uh, two four space racks that I can break up and then also the uh, the M32R here. So um, as far as wireless control goes, I'm using this Luxel uh, ABR4500 router, um, and I usually use a Ubiquiti uh, access point, which I'm still going to use. But um, the way that I designed this case is it's still a three-piece case um, so that I, I have basically unencumbered access to the faders, um, but it also has a 1U uh, rack section in the bottom here uh, for I, I didn't know what I was going to use it for I thought that I could get saucy and bring a reverb or something like that but uh, it turns out I need to have a, a functional thing aka the router in there so um, the first thing that I'm going to do uh, to get this moving is I'm going to get this router in um, so on the back of the router here uh, one of the reasons why I like this and I actually do end up specking this a lot um, is that it has an IEC inlet, which is important um, because that will allow me to use a locking IEC cable. Um, and the other thing is it uh, is rack mount, rack mount for real. I don't have to zip tie it to a shelf or anything like that. So, and the other thing, it, it does give me, uh, you know, a WAN, a LAN, and, or excuse me, it gives me one WAN and uh, four LAN ports. So uh, what I'm gonna do with this particular one um, the, the tricky thing about, about this particular uh, build is that the access point that I have never came with a uh, PoE injector. So I, I have to have a powered switch, which in most instances is not a problem, except for today, uh, where it is a problem. <laughs> um, and I need to... Um, I, I need to have uh, power so that I can power my access point. Um, I haven't quite decided yet if that's going to live in the case or you know that where that's going to live uh, because I would like to have wireless or I would like to have iPad control over the console. And then you know if I uh, need to run the M32C rig, I also need a router for those shows. So I don't know if I'm going to bring a separate router or what I'm going to do yet. But either way, I know that I need to have uh, my router in... Um, in this case because that's the only place that it will fit. So I'm gonna get started on that.
All right, so got a couple of cables finished. I figured uh, I didn't want to bore you guys too bad. You can see what I'm up to if you want to watch the time lapse or you can fast forward. So uh, the first thing I have here is an unterminated locking IEC cable. Um, I made a video on this a while ago. If you want to check in the upper right hand corner of your screen now, I'll show you how to do that in more detail or if you'd like to buy it from me, uh, you can. There is a, a link that will appear now with that. Um, so the other thing that I did was I made uh, three network cables. Um, so what these are gonna have is our LAN, uh, our WAN, and uh, so out, in, and then I'm gonna also have a separate one for the console. So uh, what I did with these was um, I uh, added heat shrink labels to these. And I have a piece of clear heat shrink that goes over the ones that we're going to be touching all the time. And then on the other side, the cable is also labeled so that, God forbid, we have a, a tech issue. Uh, we can solve that. Um, so what I'm going to do is the way that this case was designed is there's cable passages. So there's ones right here, and then there's also ones in the back. Um, and then this inner is only held in with one. Um, uh, it's a machine screw that has a T-nut on it. So uh, it can come out, and that's that's done on purpose because the uh, the console weight uh, will keep it in place during use. Um, you know, it's not it's not super critical uh, to keep it mega screwed in. And I just figured if we ever needed to do some wiring in there uh, that is more in depth, uh, we could have that done. Um, so this is the uh, console one. So I didn't terminate the end because I just want to terminate that when the console is actually in the case so that it's neat. And this is my third one. So the idea with this is I, I cut the, the WAN and the LAN long um, so that they would essentially just go to the floor. Um, and that way, I, if I want to mount my access point or therefore my switch someplace else, um, I can. I'm, I'm assuming that I'm not going to need the the WAN, the wide area network. I mean, there's, and you know, unless we have house internet at front of house, um, you know. But again, I'm just trying to make this case so that it. Uh, I'm trying to make this case so that it has just any functionality that I'm going to need because I I have never toured with uh, this crew before. So the, the headliner, I, you know, I kind of don't know what they expect. The only thing that I know from our, our one very brief production meeting that we had um, was they're going to give me a singular drive line in the, uh, in the cat snake that's going from the stage to front of house. Um, so I'm just confirming that our router here is on. I'm going to get this in. Uh, so these locking IECs are really cool. I actually keep uh, right angled and regular in stock. I use them on a great majority, of, well, I should say all of my uh, installs. Um, they are extremely useful um, because, you know, you think about everything that could possibly come unplugged, especially if this case is tipped on its back, you know, uh, the, the casters on the case face uh, towards the back. So, you know, it's this essentially is going to be riding upside down. Um, so having a, a real rack mount uh, router and then also having all of the cables actually lock is a big deal. Um, so for as far as slack goes, I'm going to pull the cables to about here um, so that if I have to pull this out, I can get to everything. Um, and then I'm going to push it in so the cable slack can uh, can live within the rack section. Because if you make it too, too neat, you're never gonna be able to pull it out and it's just gonna be uh, a pain. So I'm gonna get these rack screws in here and I've certainly learned from past projects that uh, don't screw them in all the way until you're done and you turn it on and it works because as soon as you uh, make the cables neat and screw all your rack gear in, you're gonna realize that you forgot something. So uh, hopefully we won't flash back to this video and there's no clever overlay in, in post editing that says, Ha ha ha, remember when we said we remembered everything? Uh, so if you noticed, uh, there are little holes in this bottom section. Uh, this is for the console feet to lock into. Uh, so if you know we're on this, this is a, a 12 space, just regular rack underneath it. And me at a whopping five foot four, uh, five foot five with shoes on. Uh, this is a very comfortable uh, mix position for me. Um, so this is good. Um, so looking at the back here, 
um, I can terminate my ethernet cable so I have enough slack here. Yep, tons. I'm gonna feed a little bit more back in there. Uh, I'm gonna terminate this ethernet cable because my ethernet jack is actually right here, um, which you probably can't see because the iPad mount is in the way. Uh, the, in, the ethernet jack is right here, so I'm just gonna leave this nice and hardwired. So that's rocking, um, and uh, we'll get that connected. I'll check back in once that's terminated. All right, so I ended up making another um, locking IEC. So I think that the move what I'm going to do here is, so that I don't have two power cables coming out of here, um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these so that they sort of end up right around here. Um, and I'm going to put a true one connector in here. Um, so the idea is, like, I here's the problem. Um, I own a small car, so my daily driver is a Subaru Crosstrek. So the size of the case really matters. I mean, these are normal things that you would do in a in a in a pro case uh, with a doghouse. You know, your network switch and all that other kind of stuff would go back there. Um, but because I don't have a vehicle that is capable of doing that. And I would very, very much like to continue driving my own car to gigs um, versus, you know, taking any type of uh, van or truck or anything like that. Uh, I'm going to, I did my best to keep this case as small as I possibly could. Um, the tricky thing about, the only concession that I did make uh, is that I wanted a, uh, what we call at LM a Q style case, which is the uh, style with the removable um, nose. I just wanted that style case um, because it gives you more handles and there's just it it just it it just goes together a little bit better, um, at least in my personal opinion. Um, the concession is that it had to be big. So when we designed this case, um, you know we have a, a compact version uh, available. Well, actually, this is our our standard uh, online case. So you know, I, I guess I should say I haven't pitched a product to you in the past, you know, 10 seconds. So um, you know, if you do want to check out this case, uh, there's a link uh, in the description, uh, as well as um, there's a link in the description as well as above your head right now. Um, if you want to check this case out, this is our standard online case. Um, it was crazy. So as soon as I got the call uh, from the, you know, as soon as I got off the production management call, uh, the, the band that we're going out with is an Australian band. Uh, so we, you know, we had it at a very odd time. It was, you know, it was like 11 o'clock at night, our time. Um, I immediately, uh, bought the console that night. Um, and then I also was looking at LM's website, uh, which, you know, is lmcasesonline.com. If you want to, you know, uh, look at the wares that 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 I make on a on a general basis. You can check out cases and there's cables and stuff there too. But you know, uh, you may shop on that website. But uh, to to just show you that I practice what I preach, I do the same thing. So I picked out this case. Um, God, pardon the uh, the mess in the room. Like if you follow me, uh, you know it's never really clean, but uh, it's extra bad now. <laughs> I've been. So fragmented lately because the uh, uh, we a we're just very very crushed in the integration department and and b uh, this this tour has kind of happened right in the middle of what our busy season is so um, in this magic work box right here I keep uh, a lot of scraps and things like that like my uh, heat shrink and that so I'm just going to actually have a piece that will work so I'm going to take a piece of heat shrink like this um, I'm going to line the two jackets up like that. And then I'm going to leave enough of an exposed bit here that I can strip these back, but I can also... Actually, you know what? I'm going to put a piece of electrical tape on that. Um, I'm going to leave a little enough of that exposed that I can fit um, a, a true one connector. Now, here's the interesting thing. You know, I always... When I talk to people, uh, when I'm designing systems for them, I, one of the first things that I always ask them for is, you know, if you want a locking connector, uh, you got to you gotta commit to one, you know, be it PowerCon or uh, TrueOne. And the reason why is when you start packing your case, 
uh, you know, your support cases for systems, you know, it, it starts to get real squirrely real quick um, as to, uh, you know, I, you need a power cable for this. So instead of, you know, uh, I'm sorry, the tangent that I went on earlier is, you know, you, you know, with the, the case, if it was a normal case and it had a doghouse kind of thing, you could keep the network switch and do all that other kind of stuff in there. But in order to keep this case small, you know, everything kind of has to live underneath. And then I also want the ability to unplug all this in the back if I have to. So what I'm going to do is sum these two, these two um, power cables together. Um, and I am going to make a, uh, a true one inlet on this. So the heat shrink is just gonna allow me to do that. And because uh, the true ones are, are great, uh, I can put two of these 16 gauge conductors in the same hole. All right, so we've got this wired up. Here's our moment of truth. I'm just grabbing a true one shop cable here and give this guy a little plug in there. Hey, console comes on. Great. Do we have a router? We do. Hooray. All right. So the last thing that I do want to finish up with um, is I want to put what's called a pro shell connector on these. Um, and this is basically a protector um, for this cable so that the RJ45, which is a delicate connector, doesn't get messed up. And basically uh, on our... Uh, tactical cables, which uh, I was hoping that I had one hanging on the wall right there. Um, it, it basically just covers this up. So uh, I'm going to go grab one of those real quick. So if you're not hip with these, oh man, I have one left. <laughs> um, so if you're not hip with these, they are really, really nice um, if you are dealing with um, RJ45 connectors. You know, RJ45s outside of an EtherCon format um, are very, very delicate. Um, so these little pro shells basically just slip on here. So um, I need to place a new order. I wasn't really planning on this. So I am going to use my best judgment here and use the LAN, the output connector here as my important one. Because for this particular tour, that's what I am going to be using. Shoot. <laughs> I told you this is uh, definitely a uh, a tricky build for me because of the time frame involved. I uh, didn't do any of the proper things that I should do, like generate a materials report and buy things accordingly. This is me just saying, "Oh my God, I have to do this," because as they say, the shoemaker's son and whatnot, or the shoemaker's kids, go barefoot. So the actual case maker has to throw his case together at the last minute. That's where I'm at today. <laughs> okay, so this just fits over this connector like that. These are a little tricky to build. Um, certainly uh, doing this on camera is not the uh, easiest thing in the world. So I'm just gonna get these screws very roughly in here. I'm doing this in the worst possible way. One on camera, two, not over a, see, I already dropped a screw, uh, over my white table that is a specifically white so that I can use it as a high contrast for all of the black hardware that I usually do. So if you drop a screw on a white table, it is easily found. So these pro shells, um, it's actually, uh, this is actually a dream to put these on. We, uh, we usually use a very heavy duty tactical uh, cat cable uh, and these pro shells are just a nightmare to get on that thickness of cable because they are designed for the normal, or how shall we say, uh, common thickness of cable. So we usually have to do all kinds of crazy stuff like clamp them and to get these screws in. I mean, once they're on, they're on, but... 
Okay, so once this is roughly fit, all you have to do is sort of pull this back. <laughs> Sorry uh, for the runny nose. The allergies are have been crazy here lately this year. I don't know if any of you are allergy sufferers out there, but uh, one of the reasons why I got into electronics when I was a kid is because I had bad allergies and I would just sit in my parents' basement and wire stuff. Not that that is shocking to any of you. I'm sure there's a big sigh out there that says, color me surprised, Billy. Okay, so here's our ProShell connector. This basically just goes